Hey, my name is Katie Pijanowski, and I'm a certified life coach and motivational speaker, and I'm here to help you unlock your true strength so you can create the life of your dreams. I teach you my best tips to master your mindset, create confidence, and empower yourself to take back your life. It's your time. This is the Mind and Body Strong Podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the podcast, my friends. Today, I am going to be sharing with you an audio from an IGTV live that I did with my friend, Shannon Rollins, who's an emotional wellness coach and just fellow coach friend of mine who I met through a mastermind that we're both a part of. And we really started to get to know each other. I really love the work that she's doing in the world and with her clients, really focusing on a lot of handling stress and fatigue and emotional well-being. She recently came out with a fantastic course all about habits, which is the conversation that we have on this video. And I really wanted to bring the audio version to you guys here on the podcast platform because we really talk about a lot of incredible things, why habits are so important, why habit change and changing our life can be so difficult for so many of us, and some different obstacles on that you might be encountering such as, I fell off the wagon. What do I do? And we really dive into that kind of conversation. But I know you're going to love Shannon's energy. She really has a similar story to mine where we both started in health and fitness, really focusing on working out and food, and then really evolved to want to help our clients in a deeper way with emotions and stress and fatigue and coping with those things and just all those deeper level things to really help you change your life. And Shannon even shares her own progression over 10 years of her own journey and how it all started with walking. It's so incredible. I can't wait to share this with you guys. You're going to absolutely love Shannon and her energy. Let's jump in in today's episode. Hey, Shannon. Good morning. So excited to have you on. Um, So everyone in my audience, this is Shannon Rollins, and I'm super excited to chat with her. We've been chatting a little bit about habits, the importance of habits, and she's going to tell you all about that because she is a master at all of that. She just had a brand new course come out all about habits. So Shannon, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you kind of got into this field, and then we'll kind of dive into the topic of habits. Yeah, for sure. So first of all, I just want to let you all know that I love Katie. Like we, (laughs) we initially met actually in a mastermind and I just felt like our energy was so aligned. Like we always, every time I see you doing stuff, I'm like, oh man, she just so gets me. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. And thanks for, um, I feel the same about you, Shannon. (laughs) I know. I love it. We, I feel like we always have so much fun together, but I agree. Um, So me, I guess, about me, Um, I worked a while in corporate wellness, and what I was finding is that a lot of people would come to me. I actually helped manage the gym, and I did fitness classes. I was an instructor, and then I just oversaw the entire operation in corporations. So I would, like, go from gym to gym and make sure that the wellness programs were running properly, and I would find that people would start dropping out of programs, or Mm -hmm. they would do, like, a fitness challenge, and then they'd come back, and they'd gain the weight tenfold, like they, not tenfold, but they would gain even like five pounds over what their weight was prior. Um, And so Mm -hmm. I kind of started exploring it more. And I know that I'm preaching to the choir when I talk to you, Katie, but when, when um, I was digging into it more, I was like, man, what are, what am I missing with these people who are participating in these programs? Like, what what's going on and and before then i was not as much into mental health into emotional health emotional wellness stress management i was very much like just fitness and so i was like what's going on there has to be a deeper way and what i was finding is that people were really focusing on like that end number or that end goal that they wanted to have like i want to and it would ne- it would always be related to looks um it would always be related to I mean, something a little more surface, um, like mo- the majority of it, I'm going to use the example weight loss, because I know that's the majority of us. That's really what we want to focus on. It gives us more energy. And so they would come back and say, 
man, like, I just can't stick with this. This is just not for me. And they would be putting way too much pressure on themselves. Like they give themselves a goal, a number, and then that just be it. But what they weren't doing was just focusing on those daily small behaviors. And when I say small, I mean, I mean, we're, we, you know, we're creatures of habit about like 40, I would say 45% of our day, at least 45 to 50% even our automatic behaviors. And what we find is that when we're just focusing on that envision of what we want, we kind of lose sight of the action plan in between. Uh, so that's kind of why I was diving into so much more research on creating habits and relating that to like, that's the goal. The goal is those daily activities and then it compounds over time. But what we are impatient human beings <laughs> and we, we yes. want that result right away. So I feel like because of the impatience, focusing on the daily helps us be more mindful in the process as well. So I'm not sure if that's what you've Absolutely. experienced too. Um, but yeah, that's well, yeah. just some of my background. I'm an emotional wellness coach. Now I've kind of pivoted from fitness to emotional wellness and yeah, I love what I do. So I love that so much. I relate to your story so much in that you very much focused on fitness and wellness, like things like that. I also did that for many years until I saw much of what you saw where people would make the commitment and then fall off and mm -hmm. be so focused on that end goal, whether it be weight loss, whether it be um, looking a certain way, which is typically how why most people get into the fitness realm. And I just saw so many people just not following through with their commitment, which obviously took a hit on their confidence. Um, yeah. And, you know, we yeah. want to be able to support people and you're right. Like, yeah, the daily habit thing, it's not a super sexy thing. That's why people are like, ah, it doesn't matter if I don't drink I water know. every day. Like, that's not yeah. cool. Like, you know, I want to focus on this big end goal. And while having those big dreams are super important, like those daily habits are really what kind of dictate how our life ends up in a lot of ways. I don't oh, know if you have yeah, a comment about sure. Yeah, yeah, I a hundred so percent. Tell me a little bit more. Tell yeah. me a little bit then how you set up because I know you have the habits course. How mm -hmm. do you set up people to celebrate like the little habits and start small and kind of keep their trap going instead of mm -hmm. just focusing on this like shiny object at the end of the, the tunnel, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and I really love what you said about the goal because I always I always just like to call it the vision. Um, because mm -hmm. it is a goal, but I've had, so I'm not sure if you've experienced this with clients, but you know, I, have so many of us and I've had, I've actually had this told to me m multiple times is if you are holding me accountable on this, I freak out and I'm just, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Like it's not fun for me anymore, but accountability. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's, really? and what, what you said with it, just it not being sexy, it's not sexy. And that's why that many people, we don't, not that many people talk about uh, daily habits as much as becoming more mainstream now, but like that end goal is like set smart goals. And that, so what we do in the process for the course is number one is clarity. Um, what I find a lot is people, uh, when they go out to do something, very impulse. Like, it's New Year's, I want to lose 10 pounds, or it's New Year's, I want to do this. And so, but what we're not doing is clear on the why behind you're doing it. So I'll give you an example. Um, mine has always been water. <laughs> some people okay. are nutrition. Some, For some reason, water has always been... And, I think it's because it's something you have to continually think about every day. And I'm not an app person. I don't like doing the apps. Everyone is different. Yeah, it's they I just get used to it's more game. of a hassle, I think. I agree 100%. So, so when I when I initially would start out, okay, why do I want to drink more water? And what I was finding is, well, I'm in the health field. And that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And when I kept telling myself, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, rather than actually trying it out a couple of days and being like, whoa, I have way more energy and I don't have as many cravings. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. Like this whole water thing works. And so <laughs> as I was 
setting triggers to remember that weren't app related for me, um, I, I dug into the deeper why. Okay, why do I really want to do this? And it was because I really wanted to have more energy, but that wasn't deep enough for me. So I was like, why do I want to have more energy? So then I was like, well, I want to have more energy just because I want to be more friendly throughout the day. Why do I want to be more friendly? Well, because I want to get along with people and I want that human connection. I'm like, whoa, how did drinking water go to human connection? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, why do you want it? Why do you want human connection? Well, I really want to feel love. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> why? <laughs> Why is drinking water related to love? So there's always deeper reasons behind the deeper reason behind the deeper reason until we find out what we actually want. It's like the drive is very superficial. Like, mm -hmm. why do you want to lose weight? Okay, you get your answer. Well, why do I want to do this? You get your answer. Why do you want to do that? You get the, like, you have to keep asking yourself the right questions. And that's what we do in the course through guided meditations, journalings, that you have to set the foundation. It's like, I always, like in the course, I always say you build if you if you're building a house, you have the let's just say you're putting you're trying to put the roof on before you even have like the grounding leveled. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of us do is we'll dive into a new positive habit. It doesn't even have to be health related. It could be doing a number of sales calls or, you know, whatever your habit that you're trying to make for your life, whether it's career related or health related, it's you got to build the foundation of like, okay, I need to sit for a second and recognize like, what is the real reason? Am I doing it because John Smith told me it'll make me healthier and maybe right. it'll work, but yeah, the whole maybe thing, it usually doesn't pan out. Um, mm -hmm. And then after we get into clarity and really clarifying, then we focus on, okay, which habit do you want to start with? Because if you're trying to do a ton of things at one time, if, and you know this, if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. True. So like you have to make, and especially you all are busy, man. Like, mm -hmm. especially if you have kids, a full-time job, like what, someone telling you try these seven different habits at one time is just absurd to me. Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable and it's too overwhelming. So we just start with one to build the foundation and then build out, okay, what structural things, what triggers, what routine can we build in? What small rewards can you give yourself? Because at the end of the day, life happens and you might get sick. You might lose mm -hmm. a family member. You might lose your job. Your children might be going nuts, crawling all over you in front of the computer screen when you're trying to work. And when all these things happen, you have to have like that that structure to lean on rather than I'm just going to try to remember every day. Oh my gosh. Uh, so many good things from what you just said. I just want to reflect on a few pieces, um, the transformation you described of yourself being with water. And I think mm -hmm. that was so great how you were able to shift from this place of I'm supposed to drink water because it's healthy for me, which Anytime we say should or supposed to, we're really, like you mentioned, we're on someone else's schedule and it's yeah. not really, we're doing it for ourselves. And so with you, you really asked yourself that question of like, but why? And then it, it came all the way down to, I want to feel loved all the way from <laughs> drinking water, which is like so cool and fascinating to me as a coach, because I'm like, it's so much deeper than the surface. And I feel like mm -hmm. in our fitness industry, a lot of things can be very surface level, which I think why this work that you're doing is so important because people really need to be asked those questions. We don't really sit around and, and ask ourselves why we do things. We just do them. It's because of yeah. what I've always done, you know, exactly. And I think that just shows the strength and power of being able to be guided with the right questions to really find out, Oh, like, this is why I want to build this habit. And now you're so much more motivated to do it and create that stable foundation that you've been talking about. So you don't feel like when you maybe fall off the wagon and I'll put like, you know, air quotes up because I don't really feel like we ever fall off the wagon, mm -hmm. but I'm sure people have said that to you before. Like, Oh, I've fallen off. I haven't done it for three yeah. years. Yeah. So my next question for you then is for someone who feels like they've fallen off or they are, are having trouble, I guess, starting their habits. Um, what's a way that you can help to encourage them to keep going um, even when, you know, they might quote unquote fall off? 
Yeah, I love that you use fall off because I actually teach about when you've fallen off the wagon. But I yeah. say you failed, now what? <laughs> right. You know, and I, you know, we have the same view on failure. And some of you might roll your eyes, but bear with me on this one. Um, failure in my in my words, I guess, I just don't think it exists. And I know when you're in the thick of it and you're going through it, you just can cry it out. It's okay to cry it out. I always say it's okay to feel your feelings, mm -hmm. but you just put your big girl panties on and you stand up and keep moving. Um, and so with the, like, if you fall off the wagon, that type of thing. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this course to begin with, because what I found, and I actually was trying to release full transparency. I don't care. I'll just tell you guys. I was trying to release this when I thought we would be back to normal. I started mm -hmm. creating this in April, March, April. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I'm releasing this and we're still in quarantine. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought we would be totally back to normal. So the moral to that is I was trying to create this because I knew that everyone has adopted healthy habits. I've done surveys on um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and people, I've said, how many of you have adopted a positive habit in 2020 so far, like since quarantine and stuff with it? And the majority of people said yes. But I was thinking ahead, okay, what happens when we get back to normal, whatever right. that, what happens when we get back to, cause here in, in Florida, we're still like under lockdown basically. Mm. Um, and I'm sure it's that way with you too. And what'll happen is when we get back into the swing of things, we have to have that structure. And I always say motivation doesn't exist in my eyes um, because it ebbs and flows. Um, mm. So something to answer your question, the long and the short of this is, if someone feels like they've fallen off the wagon, you have to, like, even the five-second rule with Mel Robbins, if you haven't seen that or read that book, you absolutely should. Because what will happen is you start talking yourself out of it. You have to make the decision and just do it before you start even thinking. Because the longer you think about it, the more you talk yourself out of it. Getting up yeah. early is a perfect example. If you hit your snooze button once, you're screwed. You're totally screwed because after that, you just... You keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it. And so to get started, one thing that you can start with, if you know 100% something you've really wanted to do, it's usually probably a goal that you're thinking of. Let's just use losing weight, something, or I should start exercising more, or I should be doing this more. Again, mm -hmm. that clarity behind it, and then pick something throughout the day, whatever that action step is that you need to start doing every single day and then set up some type of reminder. And usually like that could mean, I like I said, I don't like apps, but support system is huge. And accountability buddy is huge because I'll tell you, I wanted to be a part of the 5 a.m. club earlier this year before COVID hit. And the only way I was gonna be a part of the 5 a.m. club is to meet my friend at the gym at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you, I missed a couple times and she expressed to me that you need to show up. And I was like, right. oh, crap. So an accountability buddy could either be just a friend. It could be a coach. Um, it could be a group of people, like if you're a part of a running group. But the more of that connection you have with other people, then you're less likely to let others down. And we will sacrifice ourselves to not let other people down than letting ourselves down. Mm -hmm. We so, are okay letting ourselves down, but that other person, we just can't deal with it. We So those are some great steps to just get started, but stop overthinking it. If you overcomplicate things, then you will be in analysis paralysis. Just start now. Don't think about the... How am I going to just start with one small be behavior and then build from there? And guys, the internet is sometimes a, sometimes it's a, it's a good and bad. It's a double-edged sword, but there are so many resources out there. Like if you don't, I mean, like if you feel stuck, I'm sure that you could just go on YouTube and say, what do I do when, 
or using Instagram, for example, but just don't overcomplicate it. It does not have to be um, an extreme thing. But starting is better than analyzing everything and where to start. Just start with something. Yeah, that was so great. It's just keep it simple, get started, and accountability. Mm -hmm. Like, it really is that simple. And I think our brains like to trick us into thinking that things can be more difficult or you should struggle through it. And what if the struggle just didn't exist? What if you just Mm -hmm. made decisions and you just went with it and whatever happened, happened and you just moved through it? You know, like I think part of what I'm realizing in my journey is resiliency is so important because then like you mentioned, failure doesn't exist. I, I agree with you in the, in the sense that, you know, I feel like resiliency and building up your kind of like emotional well-being, um, trusting mm-hmm. yourself that you're going to get out there and do things, regardless of what the outcome is, you can trust yourself to keep going. And yeah. you're not, you know, sitting on the couch crying for three days. And let's be honest, like I've been there before, like where it's been like you get knocked yeah. down. Yeah, we've all yeah. been there. We get knocked down and we want to take a couple of emotional days and, you know, that's okay. But I think the more you can trust yourself to hold those emotions, to really work through it, um, the more resilient you become and the more you start to trust yourself. Um, and those are those small, tiny habits that start creating that. Make it simple. Start right away. Stop mm-hmm. con- contemplating like, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have the time. I don't have, you know, the money, whatever it is. Like, just get started. And mm-hmm. if, if you're right here trying to create a habit and you haven't gotten the result yet, you need accountability. You need somebody to help you because the, I mean, the result is there that you don't have what you want. So what can you do to change? You need someone that's already done it like Shannon, who's already been creating amazing habits for herself and her clients. And I think accountability is probably one of the best things you can do when you're starting a new habit, because your brain's going to really try to trick you that this isn't a good idea and this is not safe. Uh, this isn't what we normally do. And our yep. brains are really good at trying to keep us in the same thing because anything that we're doing, whether it be drinking soda every day, our brain thinks that that is needed for survival. And we have to continuously rewire our brain through those simple little yes. habits that Shannon's about to get ourselves back to a place um, where we feel safe. Our brains are like, oh, it's okay. No worries. 5 a.m. club, no big deal anymore. We're safe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, and that's, I mean, we're just so resistant to change. Our brains mm-hmm. will freak out, not know what's going on and think because it's abnormal, it's a threat. And so it's just going to try to keep you where you are, keep you safe. Um. So, and yeah. that, and that's why change is so hard, but at the yes. end of the day, if you are just feeling a little down because, again, you didn't achieve a positive habit or didn't achieve a positive behavior, it's okay. Because what's the worst that happens? You just pick up and you do it again. And, hey, you fall mm-hmm. off. You you pick up and you do it again. Like, it's not going to be this perfect string. It's kind of like this sometimes. And that's yes. okay. <laughs> and that, yeah, it's... <laughs> That like at you any new that. journey is just kind of like a little bit of, but the yeah. best, the best, um, I guess feedback and the best results that I've seen out of people is a hundred percent when you have an accountability person, a hundred percent, um, and really getting clear on why you want to do something. Um, sometimes. People are exercising or doing things just because, like you said, if if you feel like you should be doing it, um, then there might be a better habit to start with that you believe in a little more. It's still on the train. You're still moving forward. Mm-hmm. But I want to share with you my – I know we're kind of going – I don't know how long we're yeah, supposed to go. No, this is perfect. Please <laughs> share. But um, so, the, so I'll just share with you my journey. So yes. from – college. I did not exercise at all. I would literally go to the cafeteria. First of all, I had a drinking problem. Many college students do. Mm-hmm. But I would go to the cafeteria and I would get this giant pad thai noodle thing. And then I introduced myself to sushi and coffee. So if you can imagine all these things combined into one semester, I gained 20 pounds. <laughs> and then on top of that, I got really depressed and it could have been from being away from home. I don't really know, but I was very depressed. I ended up having to drop out of school and move home. And then later I transferred to UF 
and finally got my life on track. But long story short, I moved home and I met my best friend and she just said, do you just want to start walking with me? And I was like, fine, mm -hmm. what else am I going to do? Um, and she seems really cool. So I'm going to walk with her. So we just started mm -hmm. walking and talking. And then over time, I, we slowly started running. And then I would say probably maybe two or three years later. So I'm going to give you a timeline. This is a 10 year process. Two to three years mm -hmm. later, I started introducing a couple healthy foods, but not that many. Then mm -hmm. like three years after that, I finally started weightlifting. Then mm -hmm. a year after that, I got into fitness a lot more and was like, you know what? I want to start doing like competition. So I, I wanted to help serve my clients better when I went into health and fitness. And so I was like, you know what? I want to do a marathon. I want to do a triathlon. Like these are all my bucket list items. I want to do a bodybuilding show. I want to do a CrossFit competition. And I ended up doing all that. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I was like, I'm going to go into emotional wellness. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, the moral of the story is that all started just from walking. I'm telling yeah. you, if I did not start walking, and I'm not saying those aren't your dreams. Those don't have to be, but I'm just giving you an example. If you just start with something small, you would be absolutely floored the difference in your life if you stuck with it 10 years later. You would be blown away. Um, and that's where this is just so powerful. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. I love the progression of all the way back 10 years ago to where it was just this simple, you know, habit that again is like, maybe not super sexy. You're like, Oh, I'm just walking, whatever. It's not mm -hmm. a hit training workout or it's not this, you know, we have this, I feel like this stigma within the fitness industry that you need to like go full force every single day, always on, never off. Um, mm -hmm. I know I experienced that in my journey and it, um, it's just not, it's not sustainable. It's not the real expectation. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we're holding that expectation for ourselves. We're just putting ourselves through suffering. We're just setting ourselves up to, yeah. to I mean, I want to say fail, but really like any, any way you go about it, it's going to give you more information. And that was my journey of like really going all in and then realizing, you know, I need to rest. And in the fitness culture I was in was very like, I felt like there was a lot of guilt and shame behind just resting. And when I just slowed down and like mm -hmm. did yoga every day, I was like, I had to really watch my thoughts and manage my mind because my mind wanted to tell me that it wasn't enough, that I should, you know, can go running and do lit weights at the same time if I did yoga that day. And it was just like a crazy thing going on in my head. And so I know one of the things you mentioned, I think you mentioned earlier about journaling and, um, being a part of your course. And I feel like journaling is such a great way to build awareness around where you're at so that you can see like, Oh my gosh, like this is, this is where, what, what, what I have going on in my life right now. These are all the thoughts that I had going on in my head without mm -hmm. judgment. So that way you can at least get a baseline for where you're at and pull out. Like you mm -hmm. were saying, like at least one habit, like wake up when your alarm goes off, boom, there's yeah. one habit, whatever time it is, it could be 8am or 10 a.m. doesn't matter. Just commit to a time and wake up and like just yeah. start there. Yeah. And really just focusing on the beginning of whatever that behavior is. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little more difficult when it's something like drinking water because that's such a short behavior. Yeah. But like exercise, for example, the, the hardest part is always for me. I always say the hardest part is putting my shoes on. Yes. Once my shoes are on, the probability of me taking them off are very slim. It yeah. has happened, but people have this, like, we look at all these fitness gurus and it drives me nuts when people are like, this is just easy. And I'm like, well, it's a little more complicated. The human brain is a little more complicated it than is. that. Um, but I just focus on, I'm like, sometimes I wake up and I say, all you got to do is put your shoes on. Mm -hmm. And that could actually be your habit. Just getting it down to put your shoes on. But you have to identify what the hardest thing for you is. If if it's putting your shoes on, some people it's getting in the car. Mm -hmm. the The hardest part for me is getting in the car. But you just say to yourself, Shannon, you're gonna get your butt in the car. You're just mm -hmm. gonna walk towards the car. You're gonna get in. You're gonna turn on. And if you're just focusing on those things instead of like the entire boot camp workout or the right. entire one thing um, at a time. Exactly, exactly one thing at a time. Um, for sure. Yeah.
Yeah. Or what they say, I don't know if you've seen Frozen 2, but it's like the next best step or whatever. I think there's a song oh, the next in Frozen right thing. 2. Yeah, the next right the thing. Next so right, I always yes. think about that. I think about habits. That's your theme song um, moving like, forward. It is. What's That's your theme nice song thing? if you're starting a new yeah. habit. It's like, okay, wake up and then go to the car, open car. <laughs> it's like car. a robot, no. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fill up I mean, water. Literally, sometimes or... it does feel a little robotic yes. at first because it's it's not something you're used to doing. And I feel yes. like that's okay. And if you set that expectation in the beginning, like, hey, this is going to feel a little uncomfortable. And then I'm, I know my mind is going to say these things. I think setting yourself up for the things your mind yes. is going to offer you can be really valuable too, because it helps you to um, plan for kind of like your worst case scenario. I mean, really mm -hmm. the worst case scenario in my eyes yep. is where you're at right now. <laughs> so yep. that's your worst case scenario. There you go. Um, and so really don't have anything to lose. Yeah. And you're, I, I love that. I love that setting yourself up um, in advance. And the other thing too, to consider is your support system. Are mm -hmm. they on board? Yeah. Um, if you can't get their buy-in, it's okay. You just find accountability somewhere else. But yeah. consider trying to get their buy-in because it's a lot easier when you have a husband or wife who is okay meal prepping with you. That's it's great. a lot easier. Um, yeah. So when you, do, when you don't do that, considering, okay, what are some things that are also going to come up from them in this situation? Um, so then you can pre-plan ahead. You're just, you're strategizing. You're mm -hmm. creating a strategy foreseeing any problems in the future. I'll give you an example. Some of you might shame me right now, but I'm going to a socially distanced certification this weekend okay. and I'm actually driving there. Okay. Yes, we all have to wear masks and hand sanitizer. Okay. Um, but I meal prepped everything in advance. Mm -hmm. I called the hotel to see if they had a microwave and a refrigerator in the room. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's annoying. I put, I made sure my tennis shoes. I made sure I packed gym clothes. Yes, it's annoying to do these things in advance. But imagine if I didn't do this for the time that I'm gone, and then I come back and it's harder for me to get back into it. Yes, yeah. it's annoying to meal prep and do all the stuff and call the hotel. But you just you have to prepare, you have to prepare in advance to keep this going. Mm -hmm. um, so preparation in anything and that or in like you said, with your with uh, your thoughts, your thoughts in advance. What do I know? I'm going to try to tell myself to talk myself out of it. Mm -hmm. um, makes a huge tricky. difference. We like to mm -hmm. we like to report our thoughts. Like we're at my, one of my coaches always says this. You like to report the, your thoughts like you're reporting the news. Like, of course, I can't work out. There's no this, that, and the other. And you're reporting it like the news. But I'm seeing it as, no, that's just a story you chose to believe. So what can mm -hmm. we think instead? And yes, like, like in this scenario, you you thought ahead. And, um, I heard this the other day. It was like, freedom often looks like discipline and, um, like planning ahead or something like that. Like, it's not cute. Again, it doesn't always feel, oh, courage and sexy. courage and, um, discipline is what freedom actually looks like. So yeah. it, I think, you know, people want to be, you know, free from disease or free from financial stress or whatever it might be, be might be in your life. Um, that often looks like courage and discipline, which starts with small habits. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. So good. You brought up <laughs> sharing your story and all of the amazing stuff that you have about habits. Where can people come find more about you and your course? Obviously here on Instagram. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Well, so at Shannon P. Rollins, the other thing I wanted to offer you all, especially to get more of that clarity is my habit change meditation and journal prompts. So if you go over to uh, habitchangemeditation.com and it has all that fun uh, information, it's about a nine minute meditation. I just love doing them. Um, and it has prompts. Um, and it will take you through affirmations within the meditation. And if you um, have fallen off the wagon, it kind of gives you a little more of that encouragement and the guided part. So I hope I you that. enjoy that. And Katie, thank you so much for letting me come on today. This was a yeah, lot of fun. Absolutely. And we're going to put this on the podcast too. So we'll make sure to link up all that stuff so you guys can go check it out. But habitchangemeditation.com, that's where they can find yes. the free meditation. Perfect. Guys, go check that out. I know I will. Thank you so much again. Awesome. Thanks for, for having me. I'll talk with you soon. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. All right. Have a great day. Bye. 
Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Mind and Body Strong podcast. You are what makes this movement and message possible. If you loved this episode, share it with a friend, a coworker, a family member, or take a screenshot and share it on your favorite social media platform and tag Mind and Body Strong. To learn more about coaching and courses to help you take your journey to the next level, visit mindandbodystrong.com.